What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about spinner baits. We are going to make our own spinner baits using a do it mold. I'm going to link everything in the description of this video so that way you can check out all the different components that you can use for the spinner bait that we're making today. You know, the mold, the blades, the wire forms, everything. So that way you can go start making your own spinner baits if that's what you want to do. Or if you just want to learn how to make them because it's interesting to you, this video is all about that. So stay tuned. Let's learn how to pour your own spinner baits, what goes into making your own, all that kind of stuff. So keep watching, check it out. We're gonna make some spinner baits. So when it comes to spinner baits, there's all kinds of different blades. There's different skirts, there's different eyes, there's different wires, there's different swivels. There's all kinds of different components that you can buy to make your own spinner baits. What we're gonna make is this guy right here today. That's the spinner bait that we're going to be making. Um, this is probably one of my favorite color schemes is this, you know, plain lead with a little bit of chartreuse white and that, you know, black and white clearish color in the middle of it. That's probably one of my favorite color spinner baits to throw. A lot of times I throw, you know, silver blades, but this one, like you can see, has gold blades. I really like this spinner bait. It's got a thinner wire than some of the other blades out there as well, and I did that on purpose. So as we go through this video, I'm gonna give you more insight into why I chose what I chose and the logic behind it. I'm no expert when it comes to building spinner baits and all the different options out there, but I wanna tell you why I picked the components for this one. So that's the spinner bait we're gonna be making today. It's got a number four and a half with a leaf with a number four Colorado blade. That red bead right there, we got a number of brass, but actually silver color beads. And then we got our clevis with our Colorado blade. And then when we make the other one that we're gonna make in this video, we're gonna have another red bead right on top of that clevis. We got a .032 wire spinner bait wire form. And then obviously we have our lead head right there with our lure eyes. We got our rubber banded skirt with a three yacht owner spinner bait hook. These are our components. As you can see, we got all the different bags and stuff like that containing all the different components that we need for this bait. And um, I think you're gonna enjoy this video and I think you're gonna want to start making your own stuff. So stay tuned and watch this whole video because I think you're gonna enjoy it. So right now I've got the lead getting hot. You need it to get all melted and ready to pour out of your pot or ladle or whatever you're gonna use to pour your lead-based baits. And right now I'm gonna show you the lead mold that I'm using, the do-it mold that I'm using for this spinner bait. I'm gonna show you the lead pot that I'm using and those are some things that you're gonna need to have in order to get started pouring your own baits, whether it's a spinner bait, jig, sinkers, whatever, you're gonna need that mold and you're gonna need a pot or a hot pot or a ladle or something like that. All this stuff's gonna be linked in the description of this video, so make sure to check that out as well. So the first thing that I wanna cover is the mold that we're gonna be using today. It's the Ultra Minnow Spinner Jig Mold. It pours a quarter ounce, three eighth ounce, and half ounce. We're gonna be pouring a half ounce spinner bait today. That's the mold that we're using. I'm gonna open it up, show you guys what it looks like on the inside. So here's what the inside of the mold looks like. Obviously it has all that writing in there. It gives you ideas of you know, what wire forms to use, what hooks, what eyes, all that kind of stuff that you're gonna need to finish up your baits. But this is what the inside of the mold looks like. This is where all the lead goes in to actually form your spinner bait. It wraps around the hook, wraps around the wire form of the spinner bait to give you your final product. So one of the things that you're definitely going to need to make lead-based baits is obviously the lead, which is right there in, in the top of this pot. It's getting melted down right now. And then the next thing you're going to need is a lead hot pot or a lead pot like this. This is a bottom pour pot, which is that little nozzle down there at the bottom. I like to use the pot. Uh, the spinner bait mold itself says to use a ladle. I don't have a ladle right now, so we're not going to use one in this video. But that is a better way to utilize this mold is with a ladle and basically what you do with a ladle is just scoop the melted lead out of the top of this pot and then use the ladle to pour it into the mold. It is a more effective way with this mold, but I'm going to show you how I've been doing it to make my own spinner baits using the hot pot and not a ladle. So what's in view right now is the hook and the wire form that I'm using. This is an owner spinner bait hook. Um, it doesn't look like anything special right now. It just has this loop at the end where the wire form connects to keep everything together inside the, the mold and keep everything inside the lead once it's poured and hardened up. Just goes in like that and basically kind of sits in the mold with this kind of an angle right here. And then 
What I'm using is the 032 diameter wire form. This is technically smaller than what the mold calls for. And I'm gonna show you how I kind of combat that because when this is in there, it will move around and that's not what you want. And using the correct size is gonna minimize this thing actually, this wire form actually moving around inside the mold. And it's gonna give you a better opportunity to have a successful pour and to not have to bend anything or do anything like that. But I like using this smaller diameter wire form because I think I get more vibration and probably more bites out of it. So I'll sacrifice some of the ease of using the higher diameter, the larger diameter wire form for more bites. And you do lose durability using this smaller wire form, but like I said, I'd rather get more bites and lose a little bit of durability out of the spinner bait than use the higher one and sacrifice some of the fish catching ability that, that you can have by using the smaller ones. You know, I'm no expert when it comes to the spinner bait and, and wire forms and all that kind of stuff and blades and vibration, but I did some research prior to starting to do this and that's what I've been reading up on. So that's what I'm kind of sticking with. So the first thing that we need to do when getting this ready to pour is we gotta connect the spinnerbait hook to the wire form. And that's just as simple as just connecting it like that. And then we're gonna set this down inside of our mold, just like so. And the reason why I have this white piece of wood right here is so this wire form has somewhere to basically steady itself because otherwise it wants to fall all the way down to the table and it makes it difficult to close the mold up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this hook up the mold to get it into the position where I want it, which is basically where the loop goes right below the eye of the spinner bait. And then I'm just gonna close it up like so. And then I wanna show you guys something. So see how this thing moves around? That's part of the issue of having a wire form that's too narrow for the mold. So I'm gonna open this back up and show you how I combat that issue. So we're gonna open it back up. And what I like to do is take just a small piece of masking tape. I'm gonna move this back into place. And all I do is I just take this masking tape and I just put it right there so it stays where I want it. I'm gonna move this up just a tiny bit more, just like right there. And that's where I want this bait to be sitting in the mold when I go to pour it. And that masking tape helps keep this wire form from moving as much as possible. It still moves a little bit, and I'll show you how I handle that as well here in a minute. So let me close this up. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this in position straight over the top of the mold like so. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it right on top of this lead pot while it's getting hot because I want this wire form, the hook, and this mold to be nice and hot so everything pours as smooth as possible. So our mold is nice and hot. I'm gonna pull it off of the pot right now so we can pour this spinner bait. I'm gonna pull it off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move just a little bit and I'm gonna cant this mold just like so. And then I'm gonna open it up, let it all flow in there. And that should be a good pour. A lot of times you can tell whether it's gonna be a good pour or not by how much actually goes in because sometimes it'll be too cold in there and it just it, you can tell that it, the lead didn't run in there long enough so i think this is going to be a good pour but you see right now this this wire form is off center right it's all it's in there it's all snug now because the lead kind of hardened around it but it's off center that's not what we want so what i like to do is i'm going to switch hands here and you see the r bend right here there's that r bend what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pliers, I'm gonna grab this R bend, just like this, the top of it, so you have both, both pieces of that R. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna bend this back out until I get it where I want it, so it's still a little bit off center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just bend it again. It's still not right, so I'm gonna bend it a little further, and that's pretty good. That's, that's exactly where I want it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna open up this mold and see if I got a good pour. Okay, so now we got our mold down on the table. Let's open it up, check out what our spinnerbait looks like. Let's get this tape out of the way. And then we can literally just take a pair of pliers because that lead's gonna be hot and grab this thing. We check it out. It's still a little hot, so be careful. And that is our spinnerbait. Obviously you can see this up here. So all we're gonna do is take some cutters we're gonna cut that off just like that. And that can actually go back in your lead pot. So you see how on the top, there's a little bit of an imperfection right here. What I like to do is just take a little file 
and I file that down so it's nice and smooth, just like this. That's all it takes is just that right there. So now we got our nice and smooth, it's exactly how I want it. And now it's ready for all the components. Okay, so that's our original spinnerbait that we're trying to replicate. Here's where we're at with today's spinnerbait that we are making. And here's the rest of the components that we need in order to get this thing ready to put the skirt on. We got our willow leaf right there, our Colorado blade with our two red beads. We have six of the brass, but silver colored smaller beads. We have our clevis right there. And then we have our you know, barrel swivel for our last bigger willow leaf. So going back to our original spinner bait, I wanna show you how I positioned everything. So in this one, we don't have the red bead on top, but we're gonna have a red bead, and then we have our clevis right there. Then we have our silver colored beads with another red bead with our barrel swivel, and our, we have our blades. So that progression, you wanna work opposite from this end. So you start putting the components on that are gonna to be towards the top of this spinner bait, and work backwards. That's the key to make sure that you get these on the right way. And this one also, you wanna pay attention to what direction you put this blade in particular. When it's laying on a table, you want this blade to have the dip touching the table, not the open part. You want the dip to be touching, the bottom of the dip on this blade to be touching the table or whatever surface you're building this bait on. So this next part is going to be kind of boring for you guys to watch but it's you know basically what we got to do so we're going to take this first red bead and we're going to slide it up the shaft of this wire form well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our clevis and i'm going to try to move all these components onto the other blade like that and then we're going to take this and we're going to put it on our clevis and we want to make sure like i said just a second ago that we want that bottom of the blade to be touching the table when it lays flat so we're gonna test that right here. And it does just like that. So then we're gonna take our silver beads and put our silver beads on one by one. Okay, so we got all six of our, our blades on there. The next thing we're gonna, or we got all six of our beads on there. The next thing we're gonna do is put on our last red bead we're gonna put that on the shank right there and now we're ready to put our swivel on so when it gets kind of tricky when you get to the swivel because you have to put that bend just like this one has right here that bend you got to put that bend into the wire and i'll show you how to do that now okay so what you want are round nose pliers just like these are you can see how the nose on these are completely round and that's going to help you be able to put that bend in the wire and have it be round rather than a squared off bend or something like that. So you want that round bend. I mean, you could do it with, with other pliers, but this is what they're made to do is put round bends in wire like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it and just start that bend just a little bit, just like this. So I have it kind of at a 90 and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this swivel on to my wire and then I'm gonna keep going with this bend. up until I get pretty close. And then I'm gonna slide this, the swivel back up a little bit. This is where it gets tough, is when you have them all connected close like that. So bring it closer to the camera, and then you're gonna want this bend to touch. You're gonna want it to touch itself so that way that swivel can't fall off. And I like to go just a little bit past it. I'll show you in a second here. And it's gonna go just like that. That actually turned out pretty well. It kind of was a little bit clumsy, but it turned out pretty good. And that's what you want it to look like right there. And now we can put that final blade on. So for this part, you're gonna need a pair of split ring pliers just like these, basically split ring pliers have this little tip on it that help you open up the split ring so you can slide something onto it. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna open up this split ring just like that. Got a decent little opening, and now we're gonna take this blade 
and put this blade on and then just slide the blade through the split ring using these pliers to help us out. Our blade is now on there and we are almost done with our spinner bait. Okay, so we switched tables. We got our spinner bait right here. We just need to get that skirt on it and then we'll put some eyes on it. So we got three colors going on to this spinner bait. This first one is called salt and pepper. I like this one in the middle of the skirt. We got chartreuse right here and we have regular old white right here. We're gonna take out one strip of each of these. Keep it simple as we can do one strip of each. This is a pretty simple skirt to make. Some people make some pretty elaborate skirts, but I, I keep it pretty, pretty simple. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and put it in half. And basically all I do is I just estimate it. I don't get real perfect with it is I just separate this in half and I just tear it off just like this. So now we have two sides of it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and just pull it apart. And then I'm gonna do that on all the other pieces as well. So now we have all three of our pieces ready to go. And now we just gotta get it onto our skirting tool and put these three pieces together. So this is my skirt tool. Uh, there's a lot of different ones on the market, but this is the one that I use. I got it years and years ago and uh, it's been working well ever since. So basically what it is, is this thing has these little metal pieces that slide out right here and they open up just like this. And that's how you put all your skirt pieces in. And once you have your skirt pieces in, you tighten it back down because your rubber band goes on that metal slot that comes out and they tighten back down and then your skirt is ready to go. And I'll give you a better showcase on how to do that when I'm putting my skirt together for this spinnerbait. So what we're gonna be using today is this white skirt collar. We're gonna take that skirt collar and put it right on those metal pieces that come out of the skirt skirting tool. You just slide it on there just like that. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up. So as you can see, that white skirt collar is now opened up on our skirting tool. And the next thing we're gonna do is slide on our colors. The first one I'm gonna put on here is the white. The next one I'm gonna do is this salt and pepper one because I want that one in the middle. And then I want this chartreuse one on the other side, the opposite side of the solid white. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure all these ends match up and they're the same length. And then I'm going to tighten this thing back down just like that. And our skirt is now ready to take off of the skirt tool. Open it up just slightly, pull that out. And now we have our skirt and all you have to do is cut these little ends off and slide it onto your spinnerbait, your jig, whatever the process is the same for all of them. But that's pretty simple on how to make a jig skirt, spinnerbait skirt, whatever. So as you can see on this one, I didn't get everything lined up as well as I would have liked. So I'm gonna fix that myself and it's pretty easy to do that. All you gotta do is just kind of pull that skirt a little bit and it'll come out and you can get everything lined up like you want, just like that, that's pretty good. And then I like to make sure that I have one side a lot longer than the other side and you'll see why when I put this skirt on. So that's about a good, that's about a good gauge on how much offset you want from the collar. You just want it to be a little bit longer than the other side because the shorter side is gonna be the one that kind of comes out the back of the bait. And this longer side is gonna be the side that folds back over this collar. So you want this side that's gonna fold over the collar to be a little bit longer. So now we're ready to cut these ends off so our strands of skirt material can kind of go free and move around like you want. And you literally just take a pair of scissors and cut those ends off. So I'm gonna do that right now. This is where you want these ends to kind of come together. So they're all gonna be relatively equal in length. So we got one end off. Now it's starting to look more like a skirt like you would think. And then we're gonna do that with the other side as well, just like this. 
So then our skirt is now ready to go on our spinnerbait. Now, before we put our skirt on our new spinnerbait, you wanna make sure and pick what side you want to be on top, what side you wanna be on bottom. And as you can see in this spinnerbait that we already had made, I want the chartreuse to be on the bottom. So you gotta pay attention to that before you slide this skirt onto your spinnerbait or jig. So now that we're ready to put this skirt onto our spinnerbait, what I like to do first to make sure that the color I want is on top or on bottom, whatever, is to kind of do a little mock run through. So the skirt, the hook's gonna go through the skirt and come back out like this. So I like to do a little mock run through and visually in my head. So if I were to put this hook in and go down and back through like this, the skirt's gonna go onto the collar of this bait, I'm gonna see that if I do it with the way it's positioned now, the chartreuse is gonna be on top, but I want it on bottom. So I need to flip this skirt over and push this hook through with the white in this position. So I wanna make sure that I get this hook into the middle of my skirt. So what I like to do is kind of get it to all kind of fall evenly around itself so I can get a good idea of where the middle is and put my hook in through there. So I found the middle and now I'm just gonna slide the hook down through this skirt. And then this is where you're gonna get a little effort and you kind of position everything where you want it. So it's in position where I think it looks good and I'm gonna slide this on to my spinner bait. And now it's in position and you can kind of adjust everything as you want right here when it's in this position, but it's looking pretty good. So now my spinner bait has its skirt and it's ready to have the eyes put on. So I wanna give you guys some insight into how much they look alike now. Now the only differences between the two is obviously this older one does not have the red bead on top. That was just my mistake when I made this one. And then this one has the eyes and here's our new one without the eyes and the red bead up top. But otherwise they look exactly the same, which is what you want. You want th these things to be consistent when you're making them yourself. So that way when you pull one out of your box because maybe you broke it off, you've been catching fish and it's just mangled or whatever and you need a new one, you want one that is consistent with the other one that you had out previously. So here's what we got for our eyes. Obviously we have our bag of eyes, we have a toothpick, and then we have our Gorilla two-part epoxy, quick setting in five minutes and clear. You wanna make sure you get clear because you do not wanna have white residue or something like that on your bait. Um, so go ahead and get clear for sure. So when it comes to pouring the epoxy out, you gotta make sure that you, you don't wanna use too much because a little goes a long way when it comes to putting eyes on or weed guards or whatever. So a little goes a long way, so you don't wanna use too much. What I like to do though, is I like to squirt a little bit out so I can make sure that I have even amounts coming out each side and then I just move it over just like that. And then so I have consistent amounts coming out and then I just suck it back up so that way I can put the cap on and it doesn't mix and harden on itself. So the next thing I do is I take the side where I had even amounts, which is this side right here where the Q-tip is, and all you're gonna do is just stir it into itself because you want the resin and the hardener to come together and that's what's gonna make this epoxy set up because when, when they're by themselves, they don't set up, but once you mix them together, they will start to set up. So you just wanna mix it and get it nice and mixed in and that's probably good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my spinner bait right here and I'm just gonna dab a little bit of this epoxy right on the eye like that. And then I'm gonna do it again to the other side. Just like this. So I got epoxy on both sides. So I'm gonna set it aside and get my eyes out. So for this part, I like to use tweezers because it just makes it easier for me to get a hold of these eyes because sometimes they don't, they don't want to stick very well. So I'm going to take my spinner bait, get it back in the frame here. Make sure that you don't get your skirt all over it, but we already have epoxy in there. So I'm just going to set, I'm just going to set this eye into the lure eye and I'm just going to dab it down. So I make sure the epoxy gets on there and that's good. I'm going to get one more here and put it on there. Got it. I'm 
gonna get the spinner bait again, get it back into view. And then put it on the spinner bait. Just like that. Dab it in there so I can get epoxy all around it. And then at, now both eyes are on. So there's that one side. And here's the other side. So now we have eyes on both sides of our spinner bait. And now all we have to do is let those eyes dry and we got a spinner bait ready to go. So as you can see, not too difficult to make your own spinner baits. Um, this one I think turned out pretty good. That's one side of it. And then here's the other side. Obviously they look the same on both sides, but this thing still has those eyes that are wet on it. But that spinner bait turned out pretty darn good. That thing will catch fish and we will do another video showing me fishing this bait out on the water, catching a couple fish. So stay tuned for that one as well. But these things turned out really, really good. So thanks for watching that video. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing me put that spinnerbait together, how you make it, what kind of components. Now there's a lot that goes into picking what components you want, what size wire you wanna use for it, what size blades you wanna use, because if you use too big a blade, it's gonna pull it up, it's gonna give it more vibration, it may be, the blade might be too big for the wire that you chose. So there is some trial and error. I kinda got lucky um, with this combo and getting it right pretty quick. Um, do your research, go on forums, all that. I am by by no means an expert when it comes to, you know, putting these things together, picking the right blade combinations, all that. I'm still, you know, learning, but I wanted to share with you guys this one that I know is gonna go out and catch fish. So stay tuned for that next video where I'm out on the water, you guys can see me catch fish on these spinner baits that I made myself. So that way, I also wanna show that, so that way you guys can get this stuff, make them yourself, have confidence that you can make baits that are gonna catch fish. So stay tuned for that video. Please like this video, please comment on if you have any interest in making your own baits. I really appreciate getting a conversation going in the comments of this video. Um, and please subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna try to do more of these kinds of videos. Hopefully they get better over time. I'm still getting used to you know, figuring out how to get everything in view and clear and all that. So please stay tuned for more how I you know, make my own baits. Videos featuring different dual molds, lead-based baits, and plastics are gonna be coming soon as well. So stay tuned for all that. So please like the video, please comment on the video, and please subscribe to my channel. And I'd love it if you stick around, watch a few more videos. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.